Advanced Accounting 17D on Intercompany Sale of Inventory to a Subsidiary. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, and the website, stltest.net. So we're generally talking about consolidations and uh, removing intercompany activity when we consolidate. And what I wanted to talk about in this example was an intercompany sale of inventory to a subsidiary. So we're going from the parent to the sub. We have to consider a few terms here. The first one is gross profit and the fact that gross profit, which is sales less cost of sales, whoever sells the inventory is going to recognize gross profit. So I say here that sales between parents and subs in either direction, upstream or downstream, contain or will generate gross profit for the seller. When we consolidate, we will only want to include transactions with third parties, third parties independent of the parent and sub. Those entries, in other words, sales to those entries, don't have to be eliminated, do not have to be eliminated. However, intercompany sales between parents and subs do have to be eliminated. Now, if we end up having a transaction of inventory sold between a parent and a sub and we sell it to a third party and it goes out the door, there's no elimination entry because it's ultimately been, been sold to a third party and the, the inventory is out the door and the transactions have all been made. What we're concerned about with eliminations is unsold inventory, which is beginning or ending inventory balances that are sitting on the books of either a parent or a sub that were bought from the other party. In this case, if we're selling inventory to a subsidiary, the parent's gross profit in that inventory sold to the subsidiary should be eliminated. And it doesn't matter whether the transaction is an upstream sub to parent or downstream parent to sub, we have to eliminate it either way. And that's something that I don't think gets emphasized enough when we talk about intercompany transactions. So I put these steps in order and I say first, determine the beginning and the ending inventory for the purchaser of the inventory. The buyer could be the parent or the sub. In this case, it's the sub. So in my example, beginning inventory $80,000, ending inventory $120,000. Now I've got the numbers where I got these from at the bottom of the page. And again, this is inventory purchased from the other intercompany party. So we have beginning and ending inventory. Now, if we sold some of that intercompany inventory during the period, the month or the year, that's already out the door and fully accounted for. That's not what we're concerned with, with elimination entries. Here's the uh, data that I pulled from a student question. The next step is verify the gross profit that's in that purchaser's beginning and ending inventory. Well, in this case, we're told that gross profit's 25%. So for beginning inventory, if I take... The $80,000 sale price, which I saw right here for beginning inventory, and I multiply it by 25%, I get a $20,000 gross profit on that beginning inventory that's sitting there in inventory. Similarly, if I take the ending inventory of $120,000, which I linked, and I multiply that by 25%, I get a gross profit in ending inventory of $30,000. So I have a total of $50,000 in gross profit between the beginning and the ending inventory that was purchased from the other intercompany entity, in this case, what the sub purchased from the parent. So the next step is the elimination entry itself. For the buyer of the inventory, inventory is overstated. It should have been for consolidation purposes, kept at the same cost. Inventory should have been kept at the same cost. 
So inventory, the assets overstated. For the seller, there's a gross profit. We already saw that calculation. That gross profit should be eliminated in consolidation. So the entry is, we debit net income to remove the gross profit in the current year. We credit inventory to reduce the size of the asset inventory. We credit to reduce the asset in the current year. And my reason for the entry below is to eliminate intercompany gross profit. Now, what about taxes? Because this, this transaction throws in the fact that there's a 40% tax rate, which you don't see in every intercompany question. So if you consider the seller, the parent, since the gross profit is overstated in consolidation, the taxable income is overstated. And if your income is overstated, your tax is payable and your tax expense is overstated too. So what I do in step four is I reduce the liability account taxes payable by debiting. I reduce the expense account tax expense by crediting, and those represent, if I click on the cell, 40% of the numbers above. 40% of the numbers above. So we this is to eliminate the impact, the tax impact of the intercompany gross profit. So we saw four steps in the process. Verify the gross profit in beginning and ending inventory. I'll go up to step one. Identify beginning and inventory, ending inventory first that represents intercompany transactions. Second, what's the gross profit in that inventory? Third, make an elimination entry to reduce net income for the gross profit and reduce inventory because the asset's overstated. And then in step four, if you do have a question about tax, reduce the taxes payable, the liability, and credit to reduce income tax expense to eliminate the tax impact of the intercompany gross profit because gross profit's overstated, taxable income's overstated, and if that's true, taxes payable and tax expense are overstated. That's as far as we're going to get on Accounting 17D. The book Cost Accounting for Dummies is out. I teach a free course every week on the book. You can email me for the link to that information. We have the subscriber-only newsletter that I put out once a month, and you can email me if you'd like to find out more about the monthly newsletter I send by email. And finally, toughest accounting courses are small group live chats that I teach on these accounting topics that I'm asked about the most. We do 90 minutes in a small group, limited to 10 people live chat, and you can go to that page, Toughest Accounting Topics, to find out more about that. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.